Good morning, good afternoon, good night. My name is Tori, I'm so happy that you're here. We are doing a 24 hour readathon. It's just before 11. I'm going to start the readathon at one o'clock. The two books that I know for sure I'm going to be reading, I'm going to finish Ninth House. I have less than 100 pages left. I've been obsessed with this book. I started it when I was on vacation this past weekend and could not put it down. <laughs> Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. And look at how gorgeous the naked book is as well. I just can't even. So not only is this absolutely beautiful, I am obsessed with Stephanie Garber. I loved the Caraval series. I read them last year, and when I saw this was coming out, I got so stinking excited. So I think that this needs to be my next book because I'm like dying, dying to read this. Beautiful this is. I'm just obsessed with her writing. Her characters are phenomenal. I love the way they interact with each other. I love the character development. I'm just here for Stephanie Garber. Hi, I'm your number one fan. Once Upon a Broken Heart was a three for me. I think I've decided that just talking through it. So these two are for sure. I would like to read a graphic novel, I'm thinking, and I might get it on my Kindle or like on my iPad. I think that would be really fun to like break it up. I've heard really good things about Pumpkinheads, the graphic novel. I know that that's not spooky, it's like cute. I have a couple errands to run. I'm gonna go get breakfast, I'm gonna clean, I'm gonna go get some food and some snacks so that I'm ready for this readathon. And I will check in with you in a little bit. It is almost time to start reading. I'm, I don't know what it is today, guys. I am so excited to start reading. I am just in the reading mood. It is 12.57. I have three minutes. I'm gonna make a coffee. I'm actually gonna make my very own pumpkin spice latte. Just super quick because I don't think I've checked in about and told you about Ninth House. This is my bookmark that I'm using. I love it. And so Ninth House, we follow Galaxy Stern, but people call her Alex. And she has had a really rough start to life. She goes through a really traumatic experience. She wakes up in the hospital and these people reach out to her and they say, we've been watching you for your whole life and we want you to join our like secret society. So it's about the secret societies at Yale, like the Skull and Bones um, Society. I would really classify this as a fantasy mystery. It revolves around disappearances and murders and really trying to figure out like what what's going on. Hello my friends, it is 2.50 and I just finished Ninth House. Five stars. I am so obsessed with this book. It is so stinking good. It left off on a freaking cliffhanger. So I'm really excited that there's going to be a second book in the series. And Darlington is such a dream. Like what a renaissance man, what a gentleman. So. I'm going to stop raving about this book. Five stars, read this book. To be honest, I'm just gonna get up and stretch a little bit, but I'm gonna jump right back into reading. And I ended up getting, sorry, this is so hard to see, Pumpkin Heads, which is a graphic novel by Rainbow, Rainbow Rowell. I hope that's how you say it. I've been reading for just about two hours but I am on such a high from Ninth House that I'm gonna jump right into Pumpkin Heads. Okay. 
I'm like right at the beginning of pumpkin heads and I think uh, I think this was divine timing from the universe there's a whole chapter called PSL pumpkin spice life and that is 100% me today so yeah this was meant to be I was meant to read this book in this moment so just figured I would share hi lovelies so super fast I finished pumpkin heads at a little bit past four o'clock and I loved it so much it's such a sweet like corny autumnal romance and obviously it's a graphic novel so I read it super fast it's weird that was my first graphic novel um, it's about 4 30 now so I was reading for about three so I was reading for about three hours I am going to make some food I'm gonna do a quick workout I will check in with you guys for my bullet journal. I have to extend my reading log, so I will catch up with you guys for that super funness. This is my reading log, which I keep in the back of my bullet journal, and I severely underestimated the amount of books that I was planning to read this year, so I did a bookshelf with 50 books on it, and then this was my reading log, this side as well, and then this one is for audiobooks. So I didn't give myself enough room. <laughs> As you can see, right at the bottom here is ninth house, so I need to add some more space because I'm just reading a bunch of books. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm about to start reading Once Upon a Broken Heart. This is a spin-off series from the Caraval series by Stephanie Garber, and I'm just gonna read the inside cover really quickly. For as long as she can remember, Evangeline Fox has believed in true love and happy endings until she learns that the love of her life will marry another. Desperate to stop the wedding and to heal her wounded heart, Evangeline strikes a deal with the charismatic but wicked Prince of Hearts. In exchange for his help, he asks for three kisses to be given at the time and place of his choosing. But after Evangeline first promised, but after Evangeline's first promised kiss, she learns that bargaining with an immortal is a dangerous game and that the Prince of Hearts wants far more from her than she pledged. He has plans for Evangeline, plans that will either end in the greatest happily ever after or the most exquisite tragedy. So I got up to page 75 in Once Upon a Broken Heart, and I'm really liking it so far. I'm surprised that the story is extremely intertwined with the characters from Caraval. Obviously, it's like a spinoff series of the fates, and it centers around the Prince of Hearts. But Scarlet and Donatella have made a star appearance so far and that's been really fun it seems like stephanie garber has a character archetype that she follows because evangelina fits very closely to the same character archetype and like family history that tella and scarlet had stephanie garber is just so good at writing romanticy that you just get sucked in right away and everything is very fairy tale-esque so it's really fun I'm gonna take a reading break and eat some chicken nuggets and watch a scary movie with my grumpy boyfriend. <laughs> I'll check in later. Hi, welcome to Chili's. <laughs> Hello my friends, it is 1.40 in the morning. <laughs> I wanted to give a quick update before I go to bed. So I am about halfway through 
uh, Once Upon a Broken Heart. And I feel like this story, it starts off as almost like a Cinderella retelling because there's this girl who lost her father and her mother. She has this kind of wicked stepmother and she's going to this big ball. So <laughs> although it develops a little bit further than that, <laughs> it kind of gives off Cinderella vibes. The one thing I will say, it didn't hit me as hard in Caraval, although the romance is very pronounced in that storyline as well, there are other factors like the sisters tied together, um, Scarlet trying to find Tella in the first Caraval book. There were things that kind of gave the characters more depth outside of just the romance that was in the story. This book, the reason I say that it's on a parallel with Cinderella is because the women in this book care about nothing else besides getting married and having a happily ever after. Like they say those specific words and it just makes it a little bit unrelatable. Like women have other goals in life besides just getting married and getting a happily ever after. And a happily ever after doesn't necessarily mean getting married to a man. I'm going to sleep now. I will check in in the morning when I do some more reading. Morning friends. It is just before 10 a.m. It's 9.52 and I woke up about 45 minutes ago. I had my breakfast. I'm drinking my coffee or my pumpkin latte. Let's be real. Goal is to finish it today. I mean I have until one o'clock so I think that's plenty of time because I've been reading it so fast. I will check in once I've started reading for the morning, but I wanted to give a time update and hit you with the goal of finishing that book. Hi friends. So I just did the math. So it's noon. My 24 hour readathon ends in one hour and I have 135 pages left to finish this book. Hi friends. It is 1.32, so obviously I went over my 24 hour readathon, but I had to finish. You know, once you get to the end of Stephanie Garber's books, that's when everything is happening. I need like some time to process how I liked this story as a whole. At first I was leaning towards three stars, which is crazy because I gave Caraval and Legend and Finale like five stars or four stars. Like I'm pretty sure I gave Caraval five stars and then Legend and Finale four stars. This, I just think it's a three because maybe it was just Evangeline's character that I didn't love as much as I loved the Dragna sisters. I just find it really hard to believe that she, she's like obsessed with love and so her happy ending she sees as like she needs a man to complete her and that's like her entire life goal and then she like doesn't have any family so where the Dragna sisters had each other so it was never just about the man for happiness. Um, I think that's like a really key difference in this story for me that just makes me not love it as much. I love Jax. He's just such a fun character. His pet names that he has for Evangeline, Little Fox, I just love it. As always, I think Stephanie Garber's writing is so fairy tale atmospheric. I love how she details the food and the clothes and the castles and just all of the magic in her worlds that she builds is beautiful. I just don't love Evangeline as much as I loved Tella and Scarlet. So the last book of this readathon <laughs> was a little disappointing to be honest. Um, I had higher expectations for this. I was hoping it would be more centered around Jax and the Fates because the Fates were so so interesting in the Caraval series um, especially towards the end and I thought that that was where this was going where I mean Evangeline is 100% the main character I thought it was going to be Jax instead 
overall, I mean, I finished three books in 24 hours, so I'd say that that was pretty successful. Ninth House was five stars, Pumpkinheads was four, and Once Upon a Broken Heart was a three for me. I think I've decided that just talking through it. So I'm very happy with my reading. Obviously I went 30 minutes over, but that's not too bad. And thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Why are you telling me?